Good evening, welcome to Evening Worship on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter from St Peter's Shipley at home. We're very delighted that you can join us. You're all very welcome wherever you are tonight. So we're just going to have a short time together, um, praising God, worshipping, praying together. And also John's going to be taking us a little bit further into our thinking on the eighth chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans. So let's start as we come together this evening with a time of quiet. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song, Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. that this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Oh 
So we come now to our time of confession, our time to bring before God those things which have not gone as we would have wished this week and to lay them with him at the foot of the cross. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We pray together. God our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and give us life. You give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. You do not turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbour. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son and bring us to heavenly joy. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 55 beginning to read at verse 1. Come, all ye who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purposes for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn brush will grow the pine tree, and instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign, which will not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Our reading today 
is from Romans chapter 8, verses 5 to 17. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit of life is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At the beginning of Romans chapter 8, St Paul tells us that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For believers who have come to God by faith, they have been found innocent before God as a result of moving from one kingdom to another. And that that new relationship with God is open to both Jew and Gentile alike. When we believe in Jesus Christ, that move is also decisive. We move from one side to another and that change of relationship is complete. Now what Paul clearly doesn't mean here is that when that happens, followers of Jesus are taken away from the struggles and difficulties of life. That clearly isn't the case, and Paul knew that very well, because at the time he wrote this, he was in prison. We must still, in this life, face temptation and sometimes very hard choices too. But there is a difference 
Before we knew God, we had, in an important sense, no real choice at all. We were imprisoned by the sinful desires that we had, the selfish desires within ourselves. And Paul makes it clear that we are imprisoned by those things. We don't really have another choice. Now, we still do give in to those desires. Sometimes we give in to temptation. We're still tempted. But we now have a real choice. Do we go God's way or do we go our own, our own way? And much of the time we are able to make choices which allow us to go God's way. We know that that way is the right way. And that's what Paul means in the passage when in verse 9 he says we are not controlled any longer by our sinful nature. We give to the Spirit of God when we become Christians that place of control right at the heart of our lives where we were before. And a real change has taken place. We have moved from one kingdom to another. And so Paul is able to write in the passage, your spirit is alive because of righteousness, because of Christ's righteousness in you. So as we're seeking to follow God in our lives now, we are not on our own. The Spirit of God comes to be with us and to walk with us through life, as it were. But Paul then goes further. He makes a statement which I think is one of the most staggering statements in the whole of Scripture. And it's what he says in verse 11. He says, And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit who lives in you. In other words, he tells us that the same Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, who reached into the grave of Jesus Christ on the first Easter Sunday morning and brought him out of death, the Spirit with that awesome power is the same Spirit who is living in me and in you if you're a Christian. And I find that an amazing statement and that we think uh, we don't think of the power that raised Jesus from the dead as being the kind of power to which we have access. But Paul says, in fact, that that is the case. And we are able to experience the same power of the Holy Spirit in our lives today. What does he mean when he says, well, the same spirit will give life to your mortal bodies? Perhaps he means the experience of many Christians in his own day who had found that they had been physically healed by the power of God. I I don't know that for certain. He's certainly saying that the spirit of God makes a profound difference to life now that there's an important sense in which eternal life begins for us now and not at some future time at the end of our physical lives. So we are able, through the power of the Spirit, to begin to live Jesus-like lives in the now. And he describes the relationship that we have with God as that of a very close family. He says what has been sent into us is also the spirit of sonship so that we can call God Father and not just Father by the very intimate Hebrew term Abba, indicating that the kind of relationship that we have been called into 
is the best kind of family life that we can describe. And this isn't easy for everyone because uh, perhaps the natural family that they have grown up in has been far less than perfect. But Paul is asking us to imagine here the best kind of family, the family where <clears throat> uh, the father is able to bestow uh, all the love that he can upon his son. And most of us know something about relationships within families and the idea that uh, most of us would do anything for our children. And Paul's describing a family like that and saying, this is what you've been called to. And that you can think of yourselves as sons of God and those who inherit what Jesus also inherits. Now, perhaps it's at this point that we need to start being challenged by what Paul writes to us. How do we understand the relationship that we have with God in the now? Is God a distant figure, someone who doesn't seem to be very interested in our lives, someone who doesn't seem to share the struggles that we have in our present lives? And Paul encourages us to see it differently and to see that we can view God as our father, as our loving father, as someone with whom we can have a very close relationship so that we too are able to use that term Abba, father, to him. And if we struggle with that, perhaps uh, we need to be assured by passages like this that this is how we need to uh, understand our relationship with God and that understanding the relationship in that way will help us through difficult times, perhaps like the present times that we're living through. Paul knew that because, of course, when he wrote this, he was in prison and a Roman prison wasn't exactly the best place from which to write about the love of God and an intimate relationship with him. But yet, that's what Paul is writing about here. He was filled with that sense of being called to be a son of God, someone in whom the Spirit of God continued to be at work despite the circumstances around him. And let us pray that we will come to understand our relationship with God in that way too and be sustained through times like the present.
So let us pray. We open our time of prayer with a prayer of thanksgiving. Living God, Father of light, hope of nations, friend of sinners, builder of the city that is to come, your love is made visible in Jesus Christ. You bring home the lost, restore the sinner and give dignity to the despised. In the face of Jesus Christ, your love shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one a divided and broken humanity. Nothing separates us from your love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any heavenly powers, neither the world above nor the world below, Nothing in all creation can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us and has freed us from our sins and made us a kingdom and priests to serve you forever. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. And so let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations of the world, for Elizabeth, our Queen, Boris, our Prime Minister, and for all in authority. We pray tonight, Lord, for our country and for all countries. We pray for those with the responsibility for making big decisions. We ask for your wisdom, for your guiding, for your truth, and for your justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Church of Christ, for Nick and Toby, our bishops, for John and all our staff team, for the whole people of God. Lord, we pray for ourselves as we continue in this difficult time when we cannot physically be together. Draw us close as your people, as your family in this time. Uphold us, strengthen us, help us to be aware of one another and of our family in you. We pray for those who make difficult decisions in the church at this time, for our archbishops and for all leaders, for our own parochial church council as they meet virtually this week. Lord, guide them. Give them your wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of Shipley, for our neighbours and our friends. Lord, we pray for all those around us. We thank you for those who continue to serve others through the health service, through social services, through other public service for those who continue to work in delivering and serving food, for those who take care of all our other daily needs. Lord, give them all that they need. Surround them with your love, protect them. Give them your courage as they continue to work at this difficult time. We pray especially for anyone who is isolated and alone at this time. And we ask that you will continue to work through the Shipley Neighbours Project and that that will bring glory to you and show your people as they are and as they should be in our town at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Lord, we pray for those for whom this time is particularly difficult, those who are worried about finances as a result of not being able to work, 
for those who are struggling to take care of their children while schools are closed. For those who are unable to stay home because they have no home to stay in. We pray for all those who work with those who are struggling at this time. Give them resources, give them wisdom, give them courage, help them to keep going. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and the infirm, for the sick and suffering, for all who are in any need. We pray for anybody known to us who is suffering in any way at this time for any reason. We've been asked this week especially to pray for all those who are members usually of the active seniors group that meets at St Peter's, particularly for any who are struggling alone at this time, any who don't have family or friends nearby who are able to help them, any who don't have the support of the church and the knowledge of the love of God. Lord, draw close to them. Put people alongside them. Keep them safe at this time. We pray too for the dying and for those who mourn, especially in these very difficult times. Lord, put your arms around them. Give them your comfort tonight. For all of us, as we look forward to the day when we will share in the fullness of the resurrection, let us commend ourselves and one another and all of our life to God. Lord, have mercy. We pray the collect, the special prayer for today, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen.
We hope you've enjoyed this time with us tonight. If you are able to, please do join us for morning and evening prayer this week. You can find details of where that will be happening on our Facebook page and on our website, stpeets.org.uk. As we go, we pray. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.